In this video, I want to talk about competitive inhibitors. So let's say we have this beaker with this solution. And let's say in this solution, we have this particular enzyme. Let's say we have this specific enzyme, and let's say the concentration of this enzyme is one nanomolar. And let's say we also have this substrate. Let's say we also have a certain concentration of this substrate. And we know what this substrate does. This substrate binds to the active site of the enzyme, and then it's converted into products. And that's what substrates do. They bind to the active site of enzymes, and then they're converted into products. So let's say we have a certain concentration of these substrates. Let's say the concentration of these substrates is one millimolar. So we know if we have this concentration of enzyme and we have this concentration of substrate, we're going to have a velocity rate. We're going to have a certain amount of these substrates being converted into products per second. So let's say with these initial conditions, with these initial conditions, let's say we have a velocity rate of one micromolar per second. With these particular conditions and concentrations, every second, one micromolar of these substrates are converted into products. Per second, one micromolar of these substrates is converted into products per second. So we have this velocity rate. However, we know if we were to increase the substrate concentration, we have this original substrate concentration of one millimolar that gave us this velocity rate. However, what would happen if we increased the concentration of the substrate? What if we added more substrate? Well, we know if we added more substrate, we would have a more likely chance of the substrate to bind to the active site to be converted into products. So therefore, as we increase the substrate concentration, we would increase the velocity rate. However, because we only have a finite amount of these enzymes, we know as we increase the substrate concentration, eventually we'll have such a high substrate concentration that these enzymes will be saturated. They'll be overwhelmed by the substrate concentration, so they'll be saturated, and once we reach that point, we would reach a max velocity rate. We would reach a max velocity rate due to this finite enzyme concentration. So therefore, with this particular enzyme concentration, if we increase the substrate concentration to an absurd amount where we had a huge substrate concentration, we would reach a certain max velocity. And let's say at this particular enzyme concentration, as we increase the substrate concentration, we reach a max velocity of 10 micromolar per second. Every second, 10 micromolar substrates convert into products. So that's what happens in these original normal conditions. However, what would happen if now we added one nanomolar of this competitive inhibitor? So what does this competitive inhibitor do once we add it into the solution? Well, what this competitive inhibitor does is it binds to the active site. And when it, it transiently binds to the active site. So while it's bound to the active site, during that transient period, those substrate can't be converted into products. As this, this competitive inhibitor binds to the active site, and that's what competitive inhibitors do. That's the definition of a competitive inhibitor. Competitive inhibitors transiently bind to the active site, and then they bind off, and then they bind to another active site, then they bind off. However, while they're bounded on the active site, once, the, once they bound to the active site, this substrate can't be converted into products. So they're inhibiting this substrate from being converted into products. So that's what these competitive inhibitors do. So now that we've added this one nanomolar of this competitive inhibitor, what's going to happen? Well, again, let's say we have the same initial situation. We have the same enzyme concentration and we have the same substrate concentration as before. However, now we have this competitive inhibitor. So now that we have added this competitive inhibitor, we know the velocity rate will decrease. We, this velocity rate will decrease because we have some of this competitive inhibitor. Every second period, time period, we know some of that competitive inhibitor will bind to the active site. So during that one second period, some of that competitive inhibitor will bind, so therefore fewer substrate will be converted into products. But then we know the competitive inhibitor will bind off, so then some substrate will be converted into product. However, in that one second time period, fewer of these substrates will be converted into products because we have this competitive inhibitor. So therefore, the velocity rate will, will, will not be the same. It will decrease. However, what, what if we had, again, this one nanomolar concentration of, of inhibitor, but what if we were to increase the substrate concentration? What if we were to increase the substrate concentration to an absurd amount, to an absurd substrate concentration? Then, yeah, even though we have this inhibitor, even though we have this one nanomolar of inhibitor concentration, we'll have such a high substrate concentration that it will overwhelm this inhibitor. Yeah, we have a finite amount of this small concentration of this inhibitor. However, as we increase the substrate concentration, it will overpower this inhibitor. 
It, it, it will overpower this inhibitor and we'll have such a high substrate concentration, it'll be as if the inhibitor wasn't there at all. So therefore, we would be able to reach the same Vmax. This original situation with this finite concentration of enzyme, we were if, if, as we increase the substrate concentration, we reached a Vmax. However, even though we've added this competitive inhibitor, as we increase the substrate concentration, we'll still be able to reach that same Vmax. We'll be able to reach the same Vmax, so even though we added this competitive inhibitor, the Vmax hasn't changed. It, the substrate, yeah, even we have some of this inhibitor, as we increase the substrate concentration, it will get so high that it will overpower this in competitive inhibitor, and it will be as if this competitive inhibitor didn't exist at all, so therefore we'll be able to reach the same Vmax. So therefore the point is, as we add competitive inhibitors, the Vmax doesn't change. It doesn't change. We can still reach the same Vmax. As long as we increase the substrate concentration, we'll still be able to reach the same Vmax. However, it will require more substrate to get to that Vmax. If originally to get to this Vmax, maybe we need a certain substrate concentration. Maybe to get to this Vmax, maybe we need a 10 molar concentration of the substrate to reach this Vmax. But now that we have this competitive inhibitor, maybe we need a higher concentration to reach this Vmax. Maybe now, because we have some of this competitive inhibitor, maybe now we need 20 molar concentration of the substrate to reach the Vmax. So therefore, it took a higher concentration to reach the Vmax. So therefore, that means that the Km has increased. Because what is the Km? The Km of an enzyme, which we know tells us about the affinity of the, that the enzyme has for the substrate, and we know the lower the Km, the higher the affinity the enzyme has for the substrate. So if an enzyme has a low Km, it has a high affinity for its substrate. But we know the technical term of this Km. This Km is a substrate concentration required to reach half of Vmax. So therefore, we know as we add this competitive inhibitor, it requires a higher substrate concentration to reach the Vmax. So therefore, it would require a higher substrate concentration to reach half of Vmax. So therefore, the substrate concentration to reach half of Vmax has increased. So therefore, the Km has increased. And these are the two key points about competitive inhibitors. One is that the Vmax stays the same. Even though it requires more substrate to reach the Vmax, the Vmax stays the same so even though we've added this competitive inhibitor, the Vmax has stayed the same. However, the Km has increased. It has required a higher substrate concentration to reach that Vmax. So therefore, it required a higher substrate concentration to reach half of Vmax. So therefore, the Km increased. So competitive inhibitors have no change on the Vmax, but they do increase the Km. When you add a competitive inhibitor, you need a higher substrate concentration to reach half of Vmax. And those are the two key things you need to know about competitive inhibitors. The Vmax stays the same, but the Km increases. The Km, the Km increases. It requires a higher substrate concentration to reach half of Vmax, so therefore the Km increases. And you should be able to notice this on a line weaver berg plot. We know this is the line weaver berg plot, where this represents the original enzyme, so this orig represents the original situation. However, when we add a competitive inhibitor, we know the, the Vmax stays the same, but the Km increases. The Km increases. So this represents the original enzyme with the original Vmax and the original Km, but this re represents the enzyme with the competitive inhibitor. When we add the competitive inhibitor, the Vmax stays the same, but the Km increases. So you should be able to recognize that on, on these line weaver berg plots. When, when the line weaver berg plot shifts to like this, where the, the Km increases and the Vmax stays the same, this must have, this represents a competitive inhibitor.